So today we were using the elaboration game and I noticed that as we, especially when we got further into the interpretation part of it, you were really able to make these connections between what was going on in the painting and some of the conversations that we've had in class around culture. Um, so in the painting, I saw a woman cleaning clothes or something and it reminded me of when I went to Guatemala. I saw all my aunts cleaning like that and it wasn't no fancy sink. It was basically just something where you rub against and just wash it with soap. And that really connected because I've done it before and I've helped um, and I feel like it was just really part of me and the things that I saw was part of me too. In our global studies class, we've been exploring issues around immigration. So what we want to do today is we want to take a look at a painting and try to see if that painting can help us think more deeply about the way in which a person's place, either the place where the person is from, the place where the person spends a lot of time, the place where the person lives, whether that place helps to define their identity and the ways in which we extract our identity um, from those places. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look really closely at this painting called The Farm. And the painting was done by an artist named Joan Miró. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna observe it according to quadrants. If you would imagine drawing a line down the center of the painting, and then another line right across the middle of the painting like this, and then dividing the painting into these four quadrants, what I want you to do is closely observe each of the quadrants. So spend a little bit of time in each of them. Write down some of the things that you see. And remember, at this point, we're limiting ourselves to just observing. This should feel very much like when you're doing the C part of a C think wonder. We're not thinking, we're not wondering yet. We're just seeing, we're just observing, and we're writing down what we observe. Begin. So about two minutes have passed really try to make sure that you have made meaningful observations in each of the four quadrants of the painting. We've spent some time observing individually. Now we want to collaborate. And together, we're going to talk about our observations and then elaborate on each other's observations. So we want to take each other's observations from the four different quadrants here, and we want to add on or push our observations deeper so that we can together see things that maybe we wouldn't have noticed without each other's help. Let me try to just give an example to you of what it looks like to elaborate. Can someone raise their hand and just give me one of their observations? Footsteps. Can you on tell me which quadrant that it's in? Bottom left. So if I was gonna elaborate on this, I might say I see footprints that appear to be leading up a path. So I'm adding on a little bit to that observation. You have two options, actually. You can either elaborate on that observation, or you can give us another observation from that same quadrant. Ms. I see a garden. OK, so she sees a garden. Does someone want to elaborate? It looks kind of like what they used to cook in El Salvador, the big pots of food they make the food in. And it does kind of look like a garden. Maybe they use it to water the plants. but. Right next to it, there's like a dead tree. Someone want to add on to that? Take us a little bit deeper into those observations of that quadrant? There's part of a horse inside. It looks like a barn or a house. The house that Jessica said, it, I saw the textures on it, and it kind of looks like a map-like texture on it. I see a lady behind, like, doing something. Oh, wow. So there's a lady that's back here, and I might even say at the end of the path that the footprints appear to lead up. Now that we've already heard more than four voices in this corner, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into another quadrant. Let's move up to this quadrant here. I see like a rope. I see a door leading to that rope. Ah, right behind that rope, there's a little door that seems to go into, into that building. Let's move into the next quadrant over. So let's just let our eyes kind of come right on across to the right. Who has an observation from that corner? I feel like the leaves, um, leaves don't normally look like that and just basically I feel like it means something to him. And so maybe that's some kind of symbol that he's trying to share with us. Super interesting. Let's keep that in our mind as we move in the direction of our interpretations later. Um, adding on to what Jessica said, the leaves kind of look like mustaches to me. Fascinating. Huh. 
Now that's an example of something I hadn't seen before, but now that you've mentioned it, this collaboration has helped me with my observations, so I'm seeing more. So we've covered the lower left quadrant, we've moved up here and come across. Let's move to the fourth quadrant and let's take a look at this one. And this one has a lot to observe inside. Haiti, go ahead. I see a mountain. And you're seeing this in the background here? Yeah. Fantastic. Franco. I see animals inside a, like at the house or like inside the garage. I see that like the red box, like it's like an like an outline and that like really like stands out to me. I observed that like on the top part of that house there's a bird and then on like the red box there's also a bird. I noticed in the corners it has like something that looks like a nail. I think it's holding up like a fence so that none of the animals get out. Um, I agree with Tati, it looks like um, nets, and it's basically like a fence um, holding the animals together. There wasn't a net or a fence in the front side. I basically feel like he just um, took that out for we could see perspectives of the animals. Fantastic. We've now talked about each of the quadrants, and we've had the opportunity to collaborate and see a little more deeply into each of the spaces. Now. We want to move into the direction of trying to interpret a little bit um, what it is Joan Miro was trying to tell us. What I want us to do is this, and this is a place where we're going to do some turning and talking. The idea is to talk about this question first. What do you think is going on in this painting? And specifically what I want is that we can use the observations and the elaborations on those observations to try to deepen our thinking about what is going on in the painting. What do you think Joan Miro wants to tell us with his painting? I think like he was He's like showing us images of how, what he did through life and growing up. These farms, they're all made to prevent poverty from the families. And so I feel like he's trying to show it's a struggle, but we still make it by raising their own food, planting their own crops, and they work hard. And the farm is supposed to show us how hard they work because you see the woman washing dishes or clothes. Yeah, that's what I agree with too. Like a lot of the struggle that my family went through in Guatemala and El Salvador is basically them having to clean like that, not having the things that we have here. So that's what I think it is about. Like what's on the ground? So take about pots. another 10, 15 seconds. Franco, tell us what came up in your conversation. Um, in my group, my partner Abby said that um, and maybe in this pa painting, maybe an earthquake, hap an earthquake happened because all of the stuff were like thrown or like some of, some of the things were like everywhere. Go ahead, Dani. Uh, both my partners, Omar and Chris, said that there's like something strange going on because you can see in the past that there's some footsteps and they just randomly stop and the dog is like barking at it. My partner, Eric, said that maybe this farm was old because like the plants, some plants are dead and like the house here is like old. Fantastic. I see a lot of things that that like are similar to things that are in El Salvador and are really different to to things in the U.S. So I think it has to do with culture. So I want to give you one more piece of information. We talked about how Juan Miro was born in Barcelona. His family owned a farm in Catalonia. He lived there for a period of time. And then he immigrated to Paris. He moved to France and he was living there. He went there so that he could study art. Part of what he may be communicating to us in this painting is this idea of his dual identity, this idea, this idea that a person can have two different places that they call their own and two different identities that they consider to be their own. Why might it matter to think about dual identities, having two identities, related to the places people live? All right, aim to find a good stopping place. And now what I'd like to do is share out as a group. I think the thing about dual identity is really complex and you have to explore both sides. And that includes exploring where your parents are from, where your family is from, and the things that go on there. We learn about immigrants and their stories in class. And this is because we are immigrants. Our parents aren't from here. We might have been born here, but 
our families, their hearts are in our home countries. And we want to see other people's stories because we want to learn. We want to kind of know that other people also had to do the same thing that our families had to do. Kathy, how does, how does this painting and thinking about um, Joan Miró sort of presenting himself as having dual identities, how does that help you think more deeply about your own dual identity? It makes me more grateful that I didn't have to grow up where my, my dad did because it would be harder and you don't get as good as an education over there like the one you would get here. People now and how they think about immigrants, is, it really isn't great. Um, and it's just like heartbreaking because knowing that our parents were living over there and they had the same struggles, it really makes us grateful that we didn't grow up there, but we also have pride that we're from there. I think there's something very powerful in um, that collaborative observation. The way in which the elaboration game sort of walked them through the process of of seeking out connections and then building on each other's observations really enabled them to look much more deeply at it. And I think it was when they looked more deeply inside the painting that they realized that they had these personal connections to what they were actually looking at. And then also that they were then able to build into a, a far deeper conversation around, um, around immigration um, and around their own um, pride in, in holding a dual identity.